Have you noticed how in the last year this kind of atmospheric and painterly renderings took over the industry of architect visualization? Well, I found this exterior rendering by Render Vision Deutschland that I really like and in this plan of tutorial I will show you how I recreated the lighting and materials from scratch. I will also show you how to use Photoshop for the post-production. I will condense here a lot of information to build an image like this one, so maybe some parts of the video won't be beginners friendly, so if you have any questions or would like to see a more in-depth video about something in particular, please let me know in the comments. I will be uploading more tutorials on architectural visualization for Blender, so make sure to subscribe to my channel. And if you want to download the complete scene and support the channel, you can visit my Patreon page, the link is in the description. I will be using this model that I create very quickly, and also I will be using vegetation from Max Trip. This is a free pack, so go and grab it, I will leave a link in the description. First thing to do is to change the cycles and lower the samples so we can work quickly. I'm adding an environment texture and let's search a free HDR on Polyheaven. I'm looking for an overcast sky. I will load it and using Ctrl T, because I have the No Wrangle add-on activated, I will rotate the sky so we don't see these trees in the background and then I will make it brighter like this. So now I will start texturing the biggest surface, which is usually the floor. This won't be the final texture as I will add it in Photoshop, but I would like to find a texture similar to the final one. I will set the Fresno value to zero because I don't need any reflection. I'm searching now for a concrete material. I'm using the box projection metal for unwrapping and also using the magic UV add-on to set up the size of the texture. It is not really necessary, but I don't know, I just often do it. I'm going to proceed with the glass texture. The glass texture is just a material with transmission and a very low roughness, maybe even zero. Now I will search for a wood material. Once again, Polyheaven has some nice materials. This wood looks great, so I'm going to load it here. I pick up my geometry and hit, once again, box projection. So because it already looks good, I, I will just leave it as that, but as you can see, other frames has a incorrect direction. So we will fix that in a minute. So now I'm just trying to add the wood material to the front face, but not the rest of the faces. I'm applying the wood material to everywhere and now I'm changing a little bit the saturation and the hue color. 
and now it's time to fix the direction of the glued material so I will just rotate this maybe scale it a little bit and also scale these ones and this is looking already okay now I have to fix this repetition here so the problem is the box projection and um, I should change and try the smart unwrap so this did the trick I will scale a bit bit and that's it now I will add the lights I want a warmer light this is a very important step because it's going to change a lot the mood of our image we have these kind of big black squares and now it's completely different it's looking so much interesting So now I'm looking for a concrete material because I don't really like the concrete that I chose before. It's kind of tricky to find the materials that you really like for your project, but there are a lot of free assets on the internet so you can spend a little bit of time and try a lot of stuff I think I finally will choose this one so I will create this second option here change a little bit the scale so because I want the joints from our texture to be at the same level as the corner of the window I will use the manual unwrap And now I'm just playing a little bit with the values and I think this is looking good. I realized that the house was a few centimeters below the base plane so I need to correct this. And it's now time to load the vegetation textures. When you download from MaxTree, you have to specify where are the textures. I won't dive on how to improve these materials, I will use the default ones, but if you are interested, I have a video about vegetation shaders and I will leave a link here. Finally, I'm adding the roof texture, which is just a black color. And then quickly add all the materials that we already created in the background houses. I'm also adding the lights in these houses. This arrangement of plants I created with a custom geometry node. You can also find out more about it in the vegetation tutorial I just told you about. Okay, and so now I would like to add more details to the wood material. I want to make worn edges. You need a bevel node, a geometry node, a vector map set has dot product, and then a color ramp. This doesn't make any sense to me, really, but it is how it works.
I just need to make the edges a little bit lighter so it looks warm. I will add a bevel to the contract as well and now I will start to add things inside. I like to start with the curtains so I know exactly where to place the furniture. For the material of the curtain I will just search for a fabric texture. I will make it a little bit lighter and that's all. I will add a dining table with chairs and just add the furniture whenever it looks good for the point of view. I have this Ames armchair, a frame, a pendant lamp, just things to make the house is lived in. I will copy the wood material to this table, but I will make it darker. Always remember to unlink the materials by clicking on this number so you don't modify the original one. I'm making super simple materials for this furniture, because we won't see any details at the distance. And finally I will add a mist pass, so we can add a little of fog in the background. These are the both values you will want to modify, but in this case this is already good so let's jump on Photoshop now. First thing I want to do is to work with the grass. I took this picture a few months ago at the start of the winter. This is how they usually do realistic looking foregrounds in rendering, they just use a real picture. I will be quickly masking the grass. For these borders I will have to use a special brush, it's a free asset delivered by Nikolai Pekka, which is an impressive artist in the architectural visualization industry, I will leave the link in the description. And once this is done I will add some saturation adjustment layers. I want to saturate a little bit the grass and also I want to desaturate a little bit the trees and also a little bit the wood material. Now I will load our mist. I will set it as a screen mode and I will play with the opacity a little bit until I found something that I like. Okay, now I will search for some textures for the borders of the concrete wall. Something like this will work. I will invert it and then add it over the wall and I will set the texture as multiply. 
So now we have this kind of dirt over the wall. And once again, I will mask it a little bit so we have it just in the borders. And I copy this same layer and I will use it all over the wall in every place that I think it should be necessary to add some kind of worn edges. We could be doing this in Blender, but I think in Photoshop we can have so nice results also. And I will also apply a dirt map for this wooden surface. I'm coming back to the trees because I want to make the hue color more yellow than red so it fits better the whole scene. And now I want to add a person. So I found this picture in a newspaper and I will do a very quick cut out of it. I will paste it here and I will make sure that the scale makes sense with the house. I usually use the levels and also the saturation to better match the person with the background render. I also found these pictures of flying leaves and I will add them around here. I will change the color to the yellow. And we are ready for the camera roll. As always, I like to decrease the highlights, increase the contrast, play a little bit with the vibrance and saturation. And also I play a little bit with the curves. At this point I realize that I don't really like the sky, so I'm going to export a new image from Blender in which I can use the alpha channel. So now I have this alpha channel in the mask and I will apply the mask to the camera raw layer. So now I'm ready to paste a sky below the camera raw layer. I found this free asset and this has so much detail if you compare it with the previous one. I will use the curves to match our render. And as you can see, it looks great. I prefer this one. Finally, I like to add a little bit of exposure in our main subject, which is the house. And also I will add another curve to lower the exposure and I will mask just the context of the house. I know this was a lot of information and that this tutorial may not be beginners friendly, but otherwise it could last several hours. So if you have any questions or suggestions for further in-depth tutorials, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, as I'm planning to upload more tutorials about professional techniques for architecture visualization for Blender. And if you want to download the complete scene and support the channel, you can visit my Patreon page. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching.